Hi everyone, it's Abigail King. Thanks so much for joining me for my Wellness Revolution series. And this week's topic is all about detoxification in the liver, which is one of the most important organs in the body. So the liver detoxification pathways are going 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And if you're not eliminating toxins through the six organs of elimination, so if you're not sweating, if you're constipated, if you're dehydrated, if you're not breathing right, your liver is being asked to process an excessive amount of stuff. And this can cause major problems as toxins or xenobiotics as they're called bioaccumulate in the body. So you have a cup that's continually filling up until it manifests as an issue, as a disease, a skin issue, dietary issue, sensitivity, autoimmune conditions. So this is such an important subject to start empowering ourselves and becoming aware of environmental exposures. So the liver is responsible for over 500 functions in the body. It's not only a massive filter filtering our blood and breaking down toxins, it also stores fats, carbohydrates, and makes glucose as our body needs it. It regulates the balance of sex hormones, thyroid hormones, cortisone, and other adrenal stress hormones, and it removes any excess hormones from the body. It makes cholesterol and proteins. It stores vitamins, iron, copper, vitamin B12, vitamin A, E, D, and K. It neutralizes free radicals by antioxidants. It plays an important role in digestion by making bile, which helps carry away waste and break down fats in the small intestine during digestion. It also clears medications, alcohol, environmental exposures from the bloodstream. It helps prevent infections by making immune factors and removing bacteria from the blood. So that's just to name a few. Um, so the word detox has become somewhat of a buzzword in the health and wellness space and often a marketing strategy on, on social media, but I wanna go over what exactly is detoxification. So our body has a natural ability to detox and there are certain things that you can do to either inhibit this process or there are certain things you can do to encourage detoxification in the body. So I just wanna define a couple of terms before we start. Um, so detoxification means to remove the toxic quality of a substance. So it's a process that happens in the body all the time. For example, breathing is a form of detoxification. So when you breathe out, you are breathing out carbon dioxide, which comes from the blood, which comes from carbonic acid, which in turn comes from cell waste, uh, cell waste products from cell metabolism and the breaking down of glucose. So that is a very important detox process that cannot stop at any point. Uh, the body produces metabolic waste every second and we have these detoxification organs that eliminate the waste so we don't become sick. So detoxification is more relevant today because of the air we breathe, the water we drink, the medications we use, cosmetics we apply, the cleaning products we use, and the foods that we eat are loaded with chemicals that at some point, add, that some point end up causing disruptions and can, and can contribute to disease. So these chemical compounds um, are foreign to the body and they provide no functional value. And these compounds are called xenobiotics and they include food additives, pesticides, solvents, plastics, and industrial products and byproducts. So we're exposed to these substances on a daily basis and it's important to become aware of this so that we can limit any unnecessary exposure. So these chemicals or xenobiotics enter the bloodstream and 90% 90 per, 90 of these toxins are lipophilic, meaning that they only dissolve in fat and they are fat loving. So, one, so once they go through the blood, they wreak havoc and these chemicals can block hormone receptors and stimulate other hormones, target our immune system, they can alter cognitive abilities and damage DNA. And even though many of these chemicals are FDA approved for manufacturers to use, that doesn't necessarily mean that they are safe. So once these chemicals enter the blood, they look for fatty tissues to get dissolved. And where is the fatty tissues in our body? It's in your brain, your breasts, 
prostate, liver, and many of these organs are where we're seeing an increased rate of cancers. So the body, in order to buffer this irritation, starts retaining and generating fat. So no wonder we have this obesity epidemic in our country. Um, but the magic thing is that your liver, an organ designed thousands of years ago uh, or more, has the ability to detoxify molecules that were developed yesterday. In order to do that, it needs certain substances um, or substrates, um, which are nutrients. And the standard American diet is very devoid in these nutrients such as B vitamins, antioxidants, zinc. So the liver works in two phases to completely detoxify xenobiotics and convert fat-soluble toxins into water-soluble substances that can then be excreted out of our body. And each phase requires certain nutrients. If nutrients are lacking, then detoxification cannot be completed and toxins are not eliminated and remain in fat tissue. So how do you know you need to support your liver in detoxification pathways? Symptoms such, such as brain fog, uh, fatigue, weight gain, migraines or frequent headaches, hormonal imbalances, fertility issues, chronic illness and infections. Um, these are some of the symptoms that may give insight into we need to detoxify our body. Um, most of us are carrying around a toxic burden and we don't even know it. So these toxins can affect many different aspects of our body and our mitochondria, which is the powerhouse inside of our cells, which produces ATP, uh, the energy for cells to function properly. So one of my symptoms um, when I know I need to support my detoxification pathways is I get really fatigued and that makes sense because my cells were not able to produce ATP, the fuel for cells to function properly. Uh, I also get a little like brain fog as people call it um, and that's because again the brain cells need a lot of ATP and that energy to function. So uh, symptoms are a sign from the body that something is not right and often environmental toxins may be at the root. And some common signs that you have an accumulation of xenobiotics in your body also include allergies, autoimmune disorders, sleep disturbances, low energy, alterations in weight, hormone imbalances, like I mentioned, uh, mood alterations like depression and anxiety, uh, the brain fog is very classic, chronic viral infections, and chemical sensitivities, so like a hypersensitivity to smells and and things like that. So many factors determine whether the liver performs its critical functions well. And too much pressure on the liver from overeating processed foods, a low fiber diet, um, a lot of environmental exposures, and stress can cause the liver to overload, leading to a decreased ability to clear toxins and hormones and manufacture bile and do all the functions that it needs to do. So the foods that contain highest levels of antioxidants help to protect the liver and keep it healthy while foods while the foods also are very nurturing and cleansing to the liver so here's what you can do to support your body's detoxification process and limit unnecessary exposure to these xenobiotics or chemicals so there are certain foods that help protect and detoxify the liver itself so it can perform better to detox the entire body. And I sent you all the, my liver enhancing foods handout, so make sure you read that over. Um, and so as a recap, cruciferous vegetables, which are really high in sulfur and sulforaphane, which is one of the best compounds for the liver, sulforaphane is, and it helps to induce detoxification and it's very protective of the liver. And also, having a balanced diet rich in B vitamins and vitamin C is also uh, really important for proper liver function. And to avoid excess saturated animal fat, like sausage, bacon, salamis, um, dairy products, so um, those are some of the top things you could do in your diet to help ensure proper liver function. You can also be aware of common exposures and limit those exposures, uh, environmental exposures. So avoiding artificial colors and preservatives, 
typically anything that's in a box or bag, I would check out the ingredients. Um, having filtered water and avoiding plastic water bottles. So BPA and other plastics can leach xenoestrogens, meaning that it leaks out this chemical that mimics estrogen in the body. And this is a major problem. Uh, estrogen is kept at a balance in the body and too much estrogen can push cancer, particularly breast cancer, uterine, prostate cancer. So BPA, uh, even at low doses, lower doses approved by uh, the FDA, will have an effect on the body. So it inflames the brain, these chemicals disrupt the immune system, they cause disruption in uh, metabolic health, and are really connected to fertility. There's some research showing that. So BPA and even its analog, so a lot of the plastics in general, um, even if they use the BPA-free uh, tag, plastics are pretty much the same and it's a very sneaky move by the plastic industry to label plastics as BPA-free. So my solution is to use glass, stainless steel, um, and consider getting a filter for your water because um, that's just a simple but yet massive change you can make to avoid those environmental exposures coming into your body every day. And also buying organic food when possible, and I recommend following the Environmental Working Group's Dirty Dozen list of the highest pesticide produce, so to avoid those and buy organic. Also to switch your personal care products to a more natural ones, like your lotions, makeups, deodorant, and avoid spraying pesticides on your property if possible. Um, I also recommend using more natural cleaners uh, and detergents for your home. So the idea I want to bring to you is to learn how your body works so you can implement these supporting steps on a regular basis so you are always keeping those toxin levels as low as possible. And rem remember, we don't have to be 100% toxin free that's nearly impossible and I'm not trying to tell everybody to live in fear of all these toxins because we do have these detox organs. We just have to be mindful of exposures and take steps within our means when we can. And when we can't, our detox organs can pick up the slack. And lastly, I want to leave you with some resources to check out on this topic. I love the book Clean, Green, and Lean by Walter Crinion. He's a naturopathic doctor. He was actually my professor in grad school, and he taught the course all about the environmental medicine, liver detoxification. Um, so I love that book. I also love the book Feeding You Lies by Vani Hari, and she dives into the food industry. And lastly, I recommend uh, the podcast Heal Thyself by Dr. Christian Gonzalez. Uh, he goes into a lot of product reviews and really encourages you to learn all about the food industry as well. So this wraps up the lesson on the liver. Thanks so much everybody for listening and I hope you all enjoyed it.